So this is the FTC3 sale presentation. I'm Nick Kolba. I am the CEO and co-founder of Connectify. We uh, are committed to the accessibility of FTC3, making it available to everyone, making it really easy to adopt. FTC3 sales, part of that story. Our product, Connectify, is also part of that story. If you're in the bridging conversation uh, previous to this, you may want to talk to us. It's kind of uh, what we do. We provide FTC3 as a cloud service, which means that you can connect anything, uh, anywhere, regardless of desktop container technology, in a browser, mobile, et cetera. Um, we will enable it for FTC3. Um, previously, I was CTO at OpenFin, where I led the creation of FTC3, and I was the uh, chair of the FTC3 group for the first several years, as well as a board member of Finos, and uh, also kind of a serial desktop agent creator, and FTC3 sales, maybe the last desktop agent I'll create. <laughs> OK, Seb. Sure, hi. I'm Seb Ben Barrick. I'm the CTO of Norman & Sons. Uh, you probably don't know us. We're not uh, as big as Accenture, but we actually do make a difference in the capital market. So we are, I think, imagine a Venn diagram between capital market and user experience. Uh, it's been very, very thin, and it's getting wider and wider. And what we do is we actually uh, sit down with the different kind of stakeholders on, you know, on uh, trading platforms or, or risk management system, and also all those are people we don't see. Uh, and we make sure that we kind of like streamline the process. And as you know, someone the other day came up with a stat about like a trader has something like 32 apps on the desktop. And I was like, did they steal that from us? Because we literally actually went into look at all the different apps they are using. And I think that was probably that, that number. Um, while I'm talking to you today with Nick, I mean, Nick is a veteran. Uh, um, my claim to fame, I guess, is that I was one of the first uh, employee in Europe to do desktop container um, when it was a fairly kind of a new thing. Um, when I was demoing to the different uh, uh, prospective clients, half of the slide were to explain that HTML5, that's how we call it at the time, was the next, you know, kind of like uh, technology you should use on trading platform, and everyone thought we were crazy. The people we could convince uh, then end up in a problem. Uh, we have IE6, it doesn't work. Uh, we have problem of uh, having that render on the desktop, so can you help us? Um, so that's where we kind of like uh, starting to use that technology. Um, and later on, I joined Norman and Son to um, uh, actually use that technology more, and there's more desktop vendors out there, and we actually play with all of them. And it, it came to my mind that uh, we probably are uh, missing something. Is missing the slide now. A slide. We're missing <laughs> a slide. That's what we're missing. Right, sorry. So, uh, why FDC Free Cell? You already kind of talked about it. So, it's a, it's a container. But we wanted something that is fully open source. FDC3 is, a, is an open source standard, and we think that it actually makes sense to have a container that is itself open source that we can use. We wanted also something that is not just a toy. We wanted something that is actually full feature that you can actually use to obviously you know, show what the technology can do, and we will show you a bit later. But also that you can use you know, in production, I mean, it's, it's not mostly, it's not to replace the vendors, um, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, but there's a lot of people out there who are building the container, and I'm like, please, please don't, right? If you want to be in the, uh, the container business, you have vendor solution you can, but if you really want to do it for whatever reason, you have an option to contribute with the community, so um, it's, I think it's better, it's stronger if we work together to actually, you know, build that uh, piece of software. And also, FDC3 is a standard. Uh, it's out there. It's great. I mean, you know, I kind of have an understanding of how good it was, but being here at Finos, uh, actually, I mean, all those chatter about, you know, like we really need it. We use it every day. Uh, we wanted to make it even more accessible so you can really kind of download a piece of software and get started 
um, uh, right away. So that's about the why, but what it actually is, I don't think we, we kind of fully explained. So yes, it's going to be left to me. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, so FTC through sale, it's an open source desktop container, right? Um, which means that, as we were saying, it is the, uh, it provide, it's a container built on Electron that provides FTC3 functionality. It is, in fact, a Finos project, right? It's been fully contributed, which means it's much easier for everyone in finance to, to collaborate around it. And not to steal Rob's thunder, I don't know if I'm going to steal your thunder, it is also, it's FTC3 1.2 compliant, but if, if it wasn't supposed to, please keep it in the room. If it wasn't, yeah, okay, yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, we're, we're pretty proud of that. It was, it was a journey. It's everyone who's been involved with that compliance uh, conformance testing knows. Um, the tech stack itself is, as we said before, Electron. And for those of you who caught... Um, Jacob's uh, Jacob Groundwater from the Electron team's talk earlier, which was great. Um, talk, he said, "Don't fork Electron unless you have to." We don't fork Electron. We follow, we're following all those kinds of best practices he talked about. We also have we use um, Veet for for a lot of the build process, as well as Electron Builder, which isn't up there unfortunately. We use React for the UI. Uh, we use TypeScript because you'd be crazy not to. And, of course, we use FTC3. I think it's important to point out that FTC3 has a great set of NPM modules that provide you with, with all the interfaces to ensure that you're doing the right things. Um, so a bit about the architecture, going back to the point about doing, following the best practices for Electron, right? Like, uh, FTC3 sale is a lot like most any other Electron-based apps. You have a main process, which is the, the kind of browser process, node process that handles all the routing and business logic around FTC3. It's going to expose APIs that it then injects into the renderer processes where the apps in sale actually live. That's all kind of standard par for course uh, electron structure. Where it's a little, I think, a little fancy, right, is that we also are, we talk to the app directories and we aggregate them within our main process. Um, and in that, we actually sort out the difference between 1.2 and 2.0, and we allow 1.2 and 2.0 apps to interoperate uh, with each other because they're all working off of a, the same object model, which we keep in within the main process, um, and the other, the other, and we then inject based on that configuration the 1.2 or the 1.0 or the 2.0 API into those renderer processes. The other thing that's I think really nice from a security standpoint about FTC3 sale is that the only thing it injects into the renderer processes. Uh, for where the apps actually run. Everything else is, is built in, so it's not the only remote code we load uh, is the, are the apps that are using FTC3, but the only thing we decorate that with is the actual standard FTC3 API, which leaves a much smaller security surface area to think about because we're not injecting any additional windowing APIs or notification APIs or anything like that for apps to potentially use or abuse. Um, the, and the other nice thing is that when we do talk about those APIs in the FTC3 group, we actually talk about the security ramifications of the APIs we're exposing. So there is at least some oversight from a security standpoint about what goes in FTC3 sale that's very aligned with the FTC3 standards process itself. Right, so um, we kind of identified two, I mean, there's a lot of different user needs, but two that we wanted to highlight uh, today. One is the context of like, okay, FDC free standards is a standard, and you know, you can actually read what it does. Uh, we thought like, why if we could have an app where you can actually see like the power of FDC free and all the things that it can do for you. So that's kind of like the first uh, use case we're gonna talk about. Uh, and we're gonna do something that is 
uh, consider crazy in the, in a demo uh, scene is to do an actual live demo. So let's just launch uh, say here. Wait, that's considered crazy? Yeah, with uh, spotty Wi-Fi it is. <laughs> Uh, so here you go, I just launched sale, um, and the first thing it loads here, and you know, you can configure that, is the app directory that uh, Rob uh, introduced uh, this morning. So this is basically going uh, to the uh, Finos directory and just fetching all the different metadata uh, of the different apps that we've got today. So we have uh, Next.j here, we have Adaptable uh, Tools, Blotter, we have ChartIQ, Symphony, the usual suspect. Um, and, you know, what you can do is, you know, things that you probably have seen, you know, if you've been in, uh, in, in Finos for a while, you've probably seen like a, a, a few times there. But I have the ability to launch, we use that app to, to show as a launcher, uh, the ability here to um, raise an intent. So, for instance, I'm looking at, let's look at Adobe, how, how are they doing uh, at the moment, right? So let's view a chart here. Let's launch uh, Chart IQ. I think there's some Cosaic people in the room, so it's always good. Um, so here, I just literally from, the, uh, from that app over here, which is self-contained in Sandbox, I launch another uh, app, the Chart IQ app, uh, with the metadata about you know, Adobe as a ticker. Um, we can also just view quotes, instruments, etc. Now, uh, what's interesting is that uh, all those intents that you can see here, they're actually coming from the app directory. It knows that uh, all those apps that are in the directory loading memory can do those different uh, intents. So let's start uh, Symfony over here and... Apologies, but I do need to log in to Symfony. Uh, this is an open source project. It's quite new. Uh, we have uh, an issue, I think, about doing SSO. Uh, so if you're good in SSO, please, you know, uh, contribute for it. But in the meantime, I'm just going to go and put my details here. And uh, going to, let's chat to Nick. I don't think he's free to talk to me, but... Look, and I'm just going to, you know, start the chat here, and boom, Nick. Hi, Nick. We were testing cache tags on that one. Yes, I was, yeah, IBM. <laughs> Since, you know, uh, they stopped doing thread lens, I was wondering how they're doing. Um, so, yes, you've seen that like a million times. I'm going to show you that chat here. We are going to broadcast now. So I put them on the red channel, which is usually the most popular when we're doing demos. Uh, and let's see about, I don't know, AMG. So again, you've seen that you know, a few times, but you have the ability here to broadcast a different event and the app, which, you know, because like uh, in terms of the user experience, they look exactly the same, but they're definitely not the same application. They're all sandbox, and they talk to one another. So this is, you know... We already know about FDC free. That's, that's kind of you know what it does for you. And yeah, I think that's it in terms of like the intro part of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about something a bit more exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna like see your like doing a live demo that and raise it by showing code. <laughs> right. So the, so the second use case, what you uh, connect. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, as a developer, I want an easy way to develop FDC free applications so that I can deliver value to my customer faster. So Nick is going to uh, show you. Yeah. So, so let's take the scenario of somebody who's uh, working with FDC three for the first time, right? And they're just going to start a project. And please bear with me for one moment. And, okay, so, and let's say I've got, is that, is that visible enough? No, you, be, all right, here. Can, can I, see at the back? Yeah. You don't really need, this is just, so I really like to write vanilla HTML, JavaScript, and CSS when I have the opportunity. And, and since it's a demo and I'm supposed to be, 
focus, we're supposed to be focusing on FTC3, I thought it was a good opportunity. So let's say I, I'm, right, I'm a developer, I write a very simple contacts viewer app, right? And it, all it does right now is it, it just takes a contact from the query string and, and loads it from some data source and displays it, and it looks something like that. Like this guy here, or if we pass in Rob's contact, it, him or me if you pass in my contact, right? Pretty boring stuff. But let's say now, maybe my boss has come to me and said, you need to implement FTC3. And I don't know what FTC3 is, and so now I've got to figure that out. So uh, what do I do? I go to GitHub, I find FTC3 sale, I clone it, I npm install it, um, and then uh, I uh, then play, read a little bit about FTC3, and I change this app into something that looks like this, where now instead of loading from a query string, I'm going to start uh, FTC3. Um, sorry, I'm going to listen for FTC3 ready. It's going to call my FTC3 start function. That's going to add an intent listener for view contact. And then it's going to render my contact with that. It's going to pull the contact identifier off the context and render the contact using the same rendering function I was using before. So basically, I've swapped out query string parameters for uh, you know, capturing intents. Um, so now I've got FTC3 sales set up in my uh, local, and the one of the cool things about FTC3 sale that I'm actually going to show you first in the code is that now, how do I display it? How do I get this app to actually open up an FTC3 sale? It actually has to be in the directory um, in order to do that for, for the, the uh, container to open it up. Sale actually lets you load multiple directories. Um, it will then, you can specify multiple directories, and it will then uh, join them all together into a single directory, uh, which will then, you know, make available. Um, so I would then author my own sort of mini directory that has a def just this single definition for my app, right? And you can see here that... It's got a URL to my, my step one app. I'm going to give it a name and things like this. And then it's got this configuration here for the view contact intent. And it's going to take an FTC3 contact as a context. And this is kind of cool. That is me saying, hey, I'm going to use the 1.2 API because that's what it's conforming or what I'm familiar with. So, so now I can go over here and I can simply munch, I can set an environment variable that puts together that configuration file plus the Finos directory if I want to have some apps to play with and then I can just start it. And actually it should work pretty fast here. So, um, and then boom, here's my app up here. So my app isn't going to work with um, if I just open it directly now because it needs to have a, um, a contact provided to it now for it to display anything because I'm kind of a bad app developer. Um, but if I go here now and I raise an intent, I should actually see my app listed. So here's view contact, and here it is, sale demo step one. Right, I open that, and hey, there's me. Um, so that was kind of cool, right? Like we just kind of like moved stuff to FTC three pretty quickly. But I think we'd all agree that was a pretty it's a pretty lame app. It doesn't really have much information or anything like that. So we go back to the drawing board, and we're going to add in some portfolio data, and um, we're going to have that portfolio data raise some more FTC3 stuff, right? So maybe I'm going to have the instruments broadcast, and I'm going to be able to have 
a little link next to each instrument that tell that lets me view all the intents uh, and apps available for that context for that instrument. So that one is actually going to look pretty much identical to the first one because all that stuff is going to happen in the rendering layer. So if we so here is where I'm going to get my portfolio data and in there I'm going to do a broadcast and here is where I'm raising the intent. So it's like, oh, sorry, it's, it's actually raise intent for context, so I spell it right. Here is where I'm going to raise intent for context and it's like literally two lines of code, right? And we all know this who developed FTC3, it's not that much code to write. So when I run, not that one. This is where this is where it got dangerous, right? I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna run live code, and that's what happens. That's why people don't do this usually. Only fools like me. So you. Um, now, this is what my app is going to look like now. I'll grace us with Seb. And now here's the portfolio. And we can see all this stuff, right? Now, this is all pretty basic. Well, I'm going to show you some pretty interesting things about sale specifically, right? So, so far we saw it's easy to like create your own directories and like step through apps and like incrementally add them into the directory and then be able to use the Finos directory to have some things to play against. Um, what we can see here though, so, so just to show you, like that's the raise intent for context, but here's what's interesting. This is the broadcast. So I can put this onto a color now. And let's say I broadcast Amazon. Now let's say I had some other app that wasn't picking up this broadcast. One of the things I can actually do in sale is I mentioned before there's an object model. One of the things we've started to add in, it would be great to get, this is like one of those uh, first good issues, right, is making this look prettier. But this is actually a viewer that shows you the whole object model that sale is operating against. So you can view the actual state in action. Um, so if I go over to channels here, here's the red channel. I should be able to see, oh yeah, here's the context I just broadcast, right? Um, and it's not instantaneous. That's another good first issue. Um, and there's, there's Microsoft now, here's Amazon, right? So the other thing we can see too that's really nice is that I can see here's my sale demo I can see, first of all, it's on FTC 3.1.2. I can see the URL it's going to. I can see all the directory data that is loaded up for it. All this is accessible to me as a developer as I'm working within sale, which is, becomes very, very helpful for debugging FTC 3, right? In fact, I used this multiple times in trying to figure out what was going wrong with the conformance tests. Um, you also have... Uh, all the internal IDs for things. And so for those familiar with the, uh, F the FTC 3.2.0 APIs, this view ID here, this is going to become your, your instance ID in sale, right? I mean, in FTC 3.2.0. That's what we're going to return to you. That's our unique identifier for that instance of the app. Um, so this becomes very helpful for visualizing what's going wrong when things are going wrong. Um, so how are we doing on time? Because, yeah. Yeah, so finally I just want to show one last thing. I'm going to fast forward to the very end, which is, sorry, we, we, we've been maybe talking too much. So the, the, we've got here, so let's say now the next step really is that we've gotten, we have something working with FTC3, it's doing all the bells and whistles. We want to try out 2.0, and we want to have it be able to interoperate with the 1.2 world. We saw that before, but let's just make sure that, that that really works. So we can see here in this 
uh, directory, I've got 1.2, this is going to be the same app, and I've got my 2.0 version here. Okay, and then we're going to run that. And then we're going to do the same thing. We go and open our grid. And this time we will honor Rob. And we're going to, now we see when we raise the intent for view contact, we have two options here, sale demo version 2.0 and sale demo version 1.2. Let's open 2.0. And that's exciting. Look, it's got the snazzy now in FTC 3 2.0 headline on the top of it. Um, so, but the point here, more than anything else, is that these things interoperate because these, we are able, so for example, actually, if I open up the adaptable blotter and we look at this in the session viewer, We can see that's 1.2. So we go over here, and now when, uh, yeah, see that's, that is the wrong example. Yeah, yeah, I got, I, I messed up. But I, I, have a, I have a solution. This one is 2.0. The FTC 3 2.0. So we sent a message from 1.2 to 2.0. The, 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 the reality is actually we're doing it throughout the whole demo. I'm just explicitly showing it to you there. Um, and they're able to, to go back and forth without really any issue. Um, so that obviously will help a lot with the transition as we go from 1.2 to 2.0. And we have to bring a lot of apps kind of kicking and screaming with us. So. I'm going to stop there with that portion. Let's close. So, um, it wasn't that crazy after all. I think we uh, we uh, we got it working uh, in the end. Um, so, yeah. To recap, so uh, we have FDC Free Cell, which is a new open source uh, container desktop agent. Um, and we really hope that it's going to help with uh, the adoption of FDC free uh, for uh, people who are already using the standard or people who are wanting to use the standard. Um, we think it's really going to help the developer experience. We hope it's going to help also educating people in the business because you'll be able to very quickly kind of do a uh, proof of concept of what the technology can do. And sometimes it's kind of the challenge, you know, when you're taking it like us, you know, just convey uh, the, the power of, of, of what you can do with FDC3 is a tough one. And also we believe that because it's open source, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, decide what the roadmap is going to be. So, you know, depending on what is best for, uh, you know, uh, you, you decide what's best for yourself, so you can uh, you can really like um, shaping what the, what this new project is is today. Uh, but what's imme immediately next? Uh, yeah. So immediately next, we do have conformance for 2.0 coming up. That's going to be uh, hopefully uh, you know a, a really exciting time, and we. Uh, have also big focus, I think, that we should have is on this of uh, publishing an auto update. So this kind of goes back to the whole electron security thing. Electron makes it very easy to do auto updating. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of resources available, for, especially for open source projects around that. So we want to make sure that anybody using Sail can have auto updating integrated into their project very easily, and that we have a clear line for people to be able to make 
published signed packages of their sale project. Um, and that's something, again, we'll be looking to the community to sort of give us feedback on in terms of how they want to do the signing. Do they want a Finno signed version or do they want to have something signed by their company that's putting out their kind of product on sale? Um, and then finally, we're, kind of, we're looking to you, to community engagement in terms of, of, of feedback on things. There's a lot of interesting topics I think we've just scratched the surface on in FTC3, among them the UX of Interop, as well as the security of Interop, I think are great places for us to start modeling a lot of those things out with an FTC3 sale and to have like a way to really engage beyond abstract standards meetings. So finally, get involved, please. Um, especially if you've uh, uh, maybe felt like the standards process is not as engaging for you because you want to write code, this is a great place to get involved. Um, there's, uh, you can also just give us feedback we have a Slack channel, obviously, and we have email. But go to GitHub, check out the project, uh, star it, uh, clone it, try it out, make contributions. We 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 love to we just we love to see that engagement, even if there are issues. Seb and I have it on our list that we're going to start to structure like the issues so that it'll be clear for people where they can get in and get involved and. Uh, Anything you want to add there? Yeah, something I want to add. So yeah, obviously contribute. I think uh, it was a bit of the theme of the day. People say like, this is our open source project. Please go. And why should you contribute to ours is kind of like what, what I'm going to say now. Uh, first, uh, uh, I think there is an opportunity to uh, do something that is kind of like needed. I mean, uh, we see a lot of customers who are always saying like, you know, I think this is stable stack. You know, can, can we have the open source version? And that's kind of like, the answer to that, uh, but also, um, so Nick kind of started a project and, and Rob as well, and I've been kind of uh, uh, added to, to to the group. And what I found, you know, I, I'm, I'm contributed to open source before, and I always find it really daunting. You know, you go there and you know it's really kind of a, it's not even meritocratic. It's more like kind of a, uh, you know, you're not very accepted until you you prove there. Now, I guarantee you, if you raise, and I guarantee, you know, like, on me, if you raise a pull request uh, today, it's going to be, like, you know, review, like, you know, uh, within a week, which is, you know, kind of like something you don't usually see in, a, you know, open source projects. So uh, go, go on, the, on, on GitHub, you know, raise issues, and, uh, and uh, you'll hear from us very soon then. Thank you. Thank you.